Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, currently, more than 28,000 people are in the Department of Corrections custody. And if that sounds like a lot, it is. Oklahoma has one of the highest per capita incarceration rates in the entire nation, and it's taking a toll both socially and economically. Today, our focus is on second chances, from new laws at the state capitol to work underway in the trenches to help farmer offenders change for the better. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by CareerTech, a job for every Oklahoman and a workforce for every company. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. I'm Rob McClendon. Well, it's often said that politics can make strange bedfellows, but so can necessity. This legislative session, work at the state capitol, has been overshadowed by a billion dollar plus budget hole. And while there are no easy answers to the immediate financial crisis, there are some definite solutions to how we get out of it. And the very first area lawmakers have been able to come to some type of resolution is with justice reform. Oklahoma is known for having one of the country's highest per capita incarceration rates, and it doesn't come cheap. On average, close to $20,000 per offender per year, money that forced state lawmakers to tap into the rainy day fund this spring for an additional $27 million just to keep the Department of Corrections afloat. Former Speaker of the House Chris Still is chair of Oklahomans for criminal justice reform. We're at 123% capacity. Our prisons are staffed at just over 60% staffing. And so we have more people than we ever have today and, and fewer staff to, to maintain order. That's because Oklahoma imprisons more women per capita than any other state and has the second highest overall incarceration rate in the entire country. Adam Luck is the state director of the Right on Crime Initiative. The inmate increase over the last 15 years has been about 26%, while staffing has gone down about 21%, and it continues to go down. And when you look at how we compare nationally, the national average is one staff for every five inmates. And we actually have the highest inmate to staff ratio in the country. We have one staff for every 11 inmates. An unsustainable trajectory that has begun to change attitudes at the state capitol from tough on crime to right on crime. Governor Fallon signed four justice reform bills into law this session. House Bill 2472 gives prosecutors discretion to file charges as misdemeanors rather than felonies. House Bill 2479 reduces the mandatory punishment for subsequent drug offenses. House Bill 2751 raises the threshold from $500 to $1,000 for felony property crimes. And House Bill 2753 establishes means for the broader use of drug courts. Representative Pam Peterson was the House author. And I'm just so honored to be part of this process as the House author of those four measures that are evidence-based criminal justice reforms that long-term look at the criminal justice system will make a difference moving forward in our incarceration rate and helping people get made whole. Greg Treat is the Senate author of three of the four bills and says the new laws will still hold lawbreakers accountable. But they also get some treatment and they're not just warehoused in prison, uh, but they are actually uh, uh, treated and there, there's some common sense reform in there to make sure that we don't make felons out of people who otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't be any problem to society. And while the new laws won't help with the current state budget hole, since those already in prison will still remain behind bars, Treat believes this is the first step in how Oklahoma reforms its approach to crime and punishment. But it will keep future legislatures from having to expend $20,000 a year to warehouse someone when it's, a, when it's a lot cheaper to go through an alternative sentencing type program or treatment. And it's not only cheaper on the state, 
it improves that person's uh, likelihood of being successful later in life and being a taxpaying citizen. Now when we return, we look at the work underway to help those who have served their time successfully transition back to the community so they can become productive, socially responsible members of society. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon with Rob McClendon. Weekly insight into your changing world. Well, for Oklahoma inmates Star Timmons and Brittany Ritchie, life after incarceration is soon to begin. And whether they find themselves back behind bars could well be determined in the next few months. Both women are taking part in culinary classes to help them gain skills they can use outside the prison gate, thanks to a partnership between Career Tech Skill Centers and a nonprofit education and employment ministry called TEAM. I actually escaped from a prison diversion program, one of the best ones in Oklahoma called Women in Recovery. And I didn't believe that I would get a second chance to do anything because I honestly believe that was my second chance. But then I heard about this amazing program that helps um, you get ready for work skills, um, helps you build a resume, helps you communicate with people and have conflict resolution skills. And um, I was lucky enough to get into TEAMS program. We've all brought resources together to fill the, the gaps that uh, offenders, inmates have uh, when they're leaving. I'm just trying to make really good use of my time, you know, because I'm locked up and I want to make it productive. My whole um, demeanor is to be better instead of bitter. It's such a great opportunity for us because we get to, first of all, we um, get to go straight to work release after we graduate. For us to be able to go work and save money and we also, as we're working, we get to pay on our fines too. Culinary arts is just really popular, you know, and you see it on TV all the time and it just seemed really fun and interesting because I love to um, bake and make cookies and cakes. And it would just seem like a really interesting career choice. And um, that way when I get out, I have something, you know, to show for it and I can use it on job applications. Uh, team takes care of a lot, a lot of the, uh, uh, they build their resumes, they, they go through training, uh, uh, a lot of job search stuff. They've given me skills, um, knife skills, recipe learning skills, I'm proficient with using cooking equipment now. So they've, they've given me a lot of things that I can take with me after my incarceration so I don't have to go back to the same things that I was doing. It's a lot of fun being in the kitchen with all the girls at once and everybody really busy. It's kind of like a flow and like a oneness. It's really cool. My son, he's engaged and um, so he, him and his fiance have been waiting for me to get released before they have their wedding and, and it's got me thinking about I want to plan their wedding for them and it's got me thinking, oh how fun, I could make all the food, you know, for their wedding and it's got me thinking how neat would it be to like even start my own business and do that all the time with other, you know, events. I would love to be on Hell's Kitchen actually. <laughs> um, this incarceration has meant a lot to me because I don't I wasn't equipped with skills that I needed to live in the world. So to be able to do this and have something that I can take care of my daughter when I get out, that that means a lot to me. It was the first time they made you feel not like inhuman. Like you come here and everyone here is so nice and they treat you just like your normal person. They bring people here to interview us and um, they help us with resumes, they help us fill out job applications, um, all that kind of stuff that a lot of people have never done before. I really started to believe in myself more and look at all the options that I have and um, in, in all the areas in cooking and culinary so it's really exciting. I believe after this stay in my incarceration it has taught me where I don't want to be and to get the opportunity to be chosen for career tech I will definitely never be here again.
Well, Oklahoma skill centers are half the size of what they were just 10 years ago due to state budget cuts. But thanks to partnerships with groups like TEAM, there has been a 10% increase from last year in the number of inmates served. Now, earlier, I was able to sit down to visit with the director of TEAM, former Speaker of the House, Chris Steele. And if you'd like to see that full interview, just head to OKHorizon.com and look under our value added section. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, life beyond bars. But first, keeping the prison gate from becoming a revolving door. Well, Governor Mary Fallon signed an executive order in February requiring state agencies to eliminate questions about felony convictions from employment applications, saying she wanted to remove unnecessary barriers for Oklahomans with felonies trying to get a job. Studies show that recidivism, a relapse into criminal behavior, often comes down to just one thing, the relative lack of opportunity for inmates once paroled. And what we know is there's a direct correlation between opportunity and employability. And that nearly always comes down to skills training. And that's where our Blaine Singletary picks up our story. Out in this prison yard, the only thing hotter than the summer sun is the welding equipment. But these inmates don't see this as another burden. Instead, it's a valuable opportunity. Yeah, this is the best opportunity I've had. This is the best opportunity of my life. John Klein is one of seven inmates out here today on a fast track to a brighter future. This welding program gives them the skills they need to land a job and effectively a second chance on the outside. The program is just a real short-term program to catch guys at the back end of their incarceration, give them a chance to get out and make some money before they're discharged. Robbie Sanders is a career tech instructor. He says after completing this class, these inmates will have what it takes to enter a work release program, and that alone can give them a leg up on their transition to the outside world. When you step back into society, you have court costs you have to repay. Most of them will set it up where they might, they have to pay $50 a month. Well, if you don't have a job, $50 a month might as well be $500 a month because you don't have it. So if they can transition back in and they're already in the workforce, it's a lot easier to pay those bills off and then get, get your debt paid back to society completely. Career Tech started this program with the help of the Oklahoma Department of Corrections and the Education and Employment Ministry, or TEAM for short, whose mission is to break the cycle of incarceration in Oklahoma. And that's no small task. When it comes to recidivism, 21% of people released from Oklahoma's prison system went back in three years or less. But this new program gives inmates that spark, set their lives in a new direction. Again, John Klein. I'd like to make a career out of it. That's my plan. Well, for the rest of my life, until I'm old enough to retire, at least. And that's where the next leg of this program comes in. In partnering up with Work Ready Oklahoma, team gets these inmates into jobs they can grow with in areas like heavy machining, culinary arts, and of course, welding at places like W and W Steel. Been welding for a long time, just never as a steady job, but I always knew how to do it. This is Donald Calloway, an inmate in the work release program. It wasn't long after he got into prison that officials began to notice his metalworking skills. A uh, team was starting up this uh, welding program, and I told him I'd like to like to get in it. Working for him so hard, he, that's what he was looking for, was guys that wanted to work. He interviewed me and told me he was going to put me in the program, and next thing I knew, I was there I was. Career Tech works with these companies to build their training classes around what employers want from their potential employees. David Winters is the safety director at W&W Steel. We provide most of the education as far as the hands-on, the welding experience. Uh, anything that you come in with is obviously helpful. We like to get people that have a, uh, you know, a basic general knowledge, uh, a good work ethic, and then uh, we train them up. And Winters is one part of a very supportive atmosphere for these one-time offenders. Mark Millsap is the training director. I look at it as if you're willing to help yourself, I'll help you. You know, so uh, I do what I could or what I can to help you. You know, if you show me a positive attitude, uh, motivation, a willingness, and you know, you're teachable, uh, then you know, the sky's the limit for that person. 
And a lot of times you don't get that in the first day or the second day. It takes a few days uh, before you, uh, you realize and see that, you know, in a person. It's all about giving that second chance. And in Callaway's case, he's already given back. He asked me if I could uh, cage in the roof on his outdoor uh, detention unit. And uh, I went in there with a notepad and piece of paper and I told him what I was going to need. And he asked me how long it was going to take me to do it. And I said, well, if you give me three guys, it'd be about two weeks. Ended up doing it in seven working days. Uh, they came in, looked at it, like, wow. That prospect of a second chance is what drives all the inmates in this program. It's a difference that Millsap says he can see teeming within. You see it in their eyes sometimes like, you know, hey, I made a grave mistake and can I turn around? The guy that's coming from team maybe have a little bit more to prove. That being said, you know, hopefully we can give him the tools to, to help him improve and turn things around. Now, recidivism rates do vary by both gender and age. Overall, the recidivism rate in Oklahoma is 21.2%. For males, it's slightly higher at 22.6%. And for females, significantly lower at 13.3%. And recidivism rates do decrease as we age. Offenders who are 25 years of age or younger at the time of release have the highest recidivism rate at 31.8% returning to prison within three years. Now, offenders who are 56 years of age or older, well, they have the lowest recidivism rate at only 8.8%. And when you break it down by race and ethnicity, recidivism rates in Oklahoma, well, they look like this. Native Americans have the highest at 24.7%, followed by African Americans at 23.1%, Caucasians at 20.1%, while Hispanics have the lowest at 17%. Horizon is at your fingertips. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to catch the segments you may have missed and our latest new content as it happens. Now, much of the video and interviews we've shown you today are part of a comprehensive multi-platform project examining issues impacting Oklahoma. Criminal justice reform is just one of the areas. Students at Oklahoma State University's capstone class for multimedia journalism took an in-depth look into. Now joining me now is Zach Furman, a senior at OSU who shot video for this project around the state. So Zach, is this the first time you ever got to meet someone that's been an offender? It was indeed. You obviously have the stories that you hear, you know, the people who have done really serious crimes, really bad offenses. These aren't those people. These are people who just made a bad decision, just had a bad lot in life, just had, even in some cases, just had a really bad night. And they have families, they have aspirations, they have dreams, they want what anybody else wants. They just happen to be in a much different place than we are for the time being. So learning that these are people who have just the same goals, the same hopes, the same wants and desires, that really was eye-opening in learning about how these programs work and how this system is, is functioning. You know, the governor has just signed into law some reforms that, that should be at least a first step into making it a little easier to rejoin society. Uh, as you talk to these people that were really just on the cusp of being, being released, were they excited? Oh, yeah. One of the ladies we talked to, a girl named Sean, had just gotten out um, very recently, I think just a few months ago. She the light in her eyes of being able to do what she's doing and the places she wants to go. And then the people that we talked to at first, uh, Star Timmons and Brittany Ritchie, they were in the process of graduating the team program and working towards release. They, they were over the moon about just what they were going to do when they got out, who they were going to go see, what they were going to go do. It gave us hope, us as a team, us as a group. It gave us hope in seeing what they had in store for them and knowing that this was just a sample of how things are going for the people in these programs. Yeah, and I'm always struck. You know, sometimes the, the difference between success and failure with some of these people is simply opportunity. 
nobody saw it as a handout. Everybody saw it as an opportunity to pull themselves out of the situation they were in to take where they were at and use it as that learning opportunity to say, I never want to be here again. So with these opportunities, I'm going to make the most of this chance and really go out there and get it. And, and, and not to be callous in, in, in any form or fashion, but essentially what you're doing is you're taking someone that has been inside the system that's costing the state money and you're hopefully being able to put them back into society where they can be a contributor and a taxpayer. Exactly. And that's how it was put all the way down the line from talking to the people at team, from talking to any of the state representatives we talked to, from talking to the inmates themselves. It was all on the line of we want to be functional, you know, to, to, to put it in that term. It was we want to be back in society as, as like you said, a taxpayer, as a contributing member, and as someone who just has something going for them as opposed to just being a burden on the system. Well, Zach, it was certainly uh, some nice work that you and your colleagues put together. Congratulations. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. Now, if you'd like to learn more about criminal justice reform in Oklahoma, we do have a link to all the work Zach and his colleagues put together. And I'll tell you, it's an eye opener. Now, to see that and much, much more, just head to our website at OKHorizon.com and look for that link under this segment. Want to see more stories like this? All our segments are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Well, life beyond bars can be exceedingly difficult, but despite the barriers society can throw up, many former offenders say they couldn't be happier. Here's our Courtney May. Nearly 15 years behind bars, a former drug addict with four felony convictions. Inside these gates is where Katherine Birch turned her life around. It's just so many, you know, facets of my life that God has just really given back to me in a place called prison. And in this place called prison, Birch met volunteer Gloria Wilson. Wilson and her husband Don were the first people Birch saw when she walked out of the gates. When she met me at that gate, she didn't sit in the car and wait. She got out the car and stood outside the gate that opened for me to come out and welcome me there, you know. Um, it wasn't no, hey, I'm over here. She was like, I'm here. I'm here for you. Come in. It's Wilson's faith that helps her work oh, with inmates. So nice. I have problems with alcohol and drugs too, but I haven't used a drug or drank any alcohol in over 24 years. One thing about volunteers, they're impacting lives in, in a way that are changing people's perspective on what life is about. But life on the outside can't survive on faith alone. Birch works at Electro Enterprises in Oklahoma City, and she meets the job qualifications because of skills training she received from a program the Oklahoma Department of Career Tech offers inmates. I like my job, you know, mainly because they do allow me to grow here, you know. Um, there's no restriction, there's no, okay, you just do this. If you're willing to move, then they will move you, you know, and that's what I love about it. And Electro Enterprises Human Resources Manager, Brenda Ayler, believes in second chances. Lots of people say that they want a second chance. Catherine came in here and convinced us that she wanted a second chance and that she would take that second chance and do something with it. Birch is an inspiration to those who are in the same shoes as she once was. Nina Walker became friends with Birch while both were behind bars. You just don't know what it's like to see somebody that has come from where we came from to succeed. It fills you with the hope, and that's what you've got to see. You've got to see that in your, someone else's life in order to get that hope in your life. And when I would see Catherine succeeding and doing all these things and knowing where she came from, it inspired me so much. I'm a productive member of society, and I believe it's all because I was given a second chance, you know. I feel invigorated. I feel alive. I feel renewed. I feel proud. 
you know. Well, a house may not be a home, but a home is still the anchor to the American dream. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we look at housing in Oklahoma. You need workforce housing, you need to take care of homeless people. We need over 66,000 units of affordable housing, and that's in the next five years. It's a lot. A roof over our heads on Oklahoma Show Over the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, that is going to wrap us up for today, but you can see more of any of our stories on our website at OKHorizon.com. You can follow us throughout the week on Twitter at OKHorizonTV or just become a Horizon fan on Facebook where we put out regular posts. I'm Rob McClendon. Thanks for including us in your day. Hope to see you back here next week.